So in case anybody was uh, curious about seeing a side-by-side -side of the 35 f1.4 Fuji and the 35 f2 Fuji, which is the new lens, I had them out, so I figured I'd do a tiny little video here. Uh, I just posted a, or just recorded a video of the X-Pro2, and uh, I had them out anyway, so I figured I'd record this. But uh, basically, here's the two lenses. I have the hood screwed on to this guy on the X, on the sorry on the f2 so I'm gonna compare it with the hood on the 1.4 but uh, basically here's the two uh, you can see the 35 f2 is uh, a bit smaller for sure uh, I was gonna say significant but I think that's sort of an exaggeration it's definitely smaller uh, it feels heavier. I don't know that I haven't looked at the spec, but it actually feels heavier than the 1.4. This kind of has a, I don't know, a little bit of a hollow feeling. This feels like a solid block. Kind of reminds me of the X Pro 1 feeling. Even though it's nice and metal, it kind of feels light and hollow. And then the XT1 feels like a solid brick of magnesium. Uh, this feels like a really solid metal lens. It's heavy for its size. Uh, the front elements are significantly different in size. Uh, you got a 43 millimeter here and a 52 filter. Uh, the elements inside obviously are larger in the 1.4. No, no surprise. And then uh, the rear obviously is about the same, though. This is sort of a cylinder shape, and you see the 1.4 kind of flutes out immediately to deal with the bigger barrel. The barrel on this is a little bit smaller here than it is here and then it shrinks as you go forward whereas this stays the same size up until you actually get to the uh, filter threads which obviously are uh, smaller but this one has the tiny 43 millimeter filter so it's even smaller uh, but otherwise I mean, that's kind of it I just wanted to do a quick uh, size comparison here again I feel like if you've not purchase either of these lenses and you're getting into the system maybe for the first time or you just don't have a 35 millimeter lens I would uh, just go with this guy it's cheaper it's better built in my opinion from the feeling of it the autofocus is virtually silent and it's fast and it works awesome uh, with the X-T1 it's just more feels like a kind of a current modern lens uh, this guy is slower to focus not by a lot but it does feel a little bit slower uh, it's weird on the X Pro One. I kind of feel like it actually works better than this lens. But I don't know what it is. There's just something kind of nice feeling about the noisy focus on the X Pro One, but on the XT One, it doesn't seem to be the same. I don't know. It's just probably just like a something in my mind. But uh, as far as image quality, though, I haven't done extensive testing. But this thing doesn't do anything that this doesn't magically, and this has an extra stop. So you know, this lens you're stuck at f2. This guy, you can go to one for, and I actually recently, uh, and I answered somebody's question on one of my videos. Uh, I was shooting the other night. It was actually for a, what was it? It was a tree lighting, I think, for Christmas in, in the town I live in. And uh, it was really late, and it was, you know, just basically pitch black. I was, not pitch black. I mean, there was lights for the, the town center we're in, but uh, there was no no significant light, and I was maxed out at 6,400 ISO on my X-T1 and I was shooting only like a 60th of a second and I was obviously at f2 if I had 1.4 at that same 60th of a second I could have gone faster to 1 1 25th to maybe capture less blurry you know kids running around or I uh, could have dropped to ISO 3200 because I'm going an extra stop of more light gathering so from that regard this is a more flexible lens and uh the, no the noisier focus and maybe slightly slower, slower focus really doesn't matter. And, you know, as far as that situation, high ISO, there's not going to be any difference in image quality. They're both going to be really noisy at 32, 6400, you know, ISO. But uh, I think I, I would have, after, after going out, I wanted to use this lens because I just got it. I had realized I should have brought this for the extra stop or I should have brought my... Uh, <clears throat> my 1.256 and then I wouldn't have been able to get as wide of a shot but I, I don't know maybe I could have got better shots of uh, the kids or something but I think there's definitely advantages here but I wouldn't buy this one if I didn't have 35 I just just kind of getting it Th those who have this lens and maybe they're 
either tight on their budget or 35 millimeters, not a significant focal length for them. Like they, maybe they shoot the 23 more or the 56 more or whatever, and they're just not a priority. This isn't a priority lens to them. I would uh, just stick with this. Or if you can get a crazy good deal on this used potentially now that this is out, I don't think that's probably going to happen. This could be the better budget lens. But if you're buying new, just getting into the system, you don't have a 35, I would go with the, the F2 for sure. It's just the, the benefits outweigh the negatives. Uh, it, it's just crazy this lens is 399 and this is like 500 or something. Which, you know, back then it made sense. And I think I even paid less than that even when I got it like two year, two plus years ago. Because I was doing, they are doing a promotion right around Christmas where if you bought the X-Pro1 and a couple or any lenses they give you discounts on the lenses and the camera so i think i don't i don't even think i paid 500 for this at the time so it's kind of insane that the standard price for this is like 550 uh it's a good lens but it's made in japan but uh it's kind of lame and then with all the new weather sealed cameras like well the xt1 and then supposedly the x pro 2 is going to be weather sealed i've heard or read rather uh you want the weather sealing of this so Anyway, it's kind of a... Oh, and one other thing. This uh, lens has the typical horrible Fuji caps that kind of fall off and suck. Whereas, uh, so far, this F2 is the only lens that has this cool this cool cap. I know it's just a cap, but this cap is like the best lens cap Fuji's made. These uh, finger pinch things are like actually curved inward, so you, like your finger totally grabs it. I've seen pictures of the caps on the the two like red zoom lenses, the 16 to 55 to 8 and the 50 to 140, and they have a different cap than this, but I'm hoping Fuji adopts this for all the future lenses. I just got the the 16 f 1.4 and it uses a big 67 millimeter one of these. I was disappointed to see that they're still using this, but Maybe it's just going to take them longer to get get through their stock, and then they'll just switch caps, even though the packaging will be the same. Canon did that when they redesigned their lens caps a few years ago, where the same lens just started shipping after a certain point with the newer cap design. So uh, hopefully Fuji will do that. Uh, the only thing that other kind of a bummer is this had a really cool uh, lens hood. Not the cap, but this is a nice lens hood, but... This does the job fine, and it's tiny, so. Anyway, that's uh, my thought on the two, purely from a kind of a cost feature standpoint.